I will explain the working principle of resistive pulse sensing or RPS. So with RPS, we have two fluid chambers divided by an insulating membrane. And in each chamber, an electrode is immersed and a voltage is applied over these electrodes. And then we measure the current I over here. So typically what we see, what we measure, is I, the current, versus time, which look like this. Then if we introduce our particles over here, and a particle is passing through the pore over there, what we see is a drop of current. And then the height of this trough, or resistive pulse, delta I, compared to the height of the baseline current, I, so delta I over I, is equal to a calibration constant times the diameter of the particle cubed. So in order to derive this calibration constant, we need uh, a reference sample of uh, beads, for example, of known size. And to get the concentration of our sample, uh, we assume that the number of resistive pulses here, uh, the frequency of resistive pulses, uh, is proportional uh, to the concentration. And also that we have to calibrate with the reference sample. For resistive pulse sensing, we use the QNano from ISON, which you see over here. So the heart of the QNano are the nanopores. So here you can see three different pores with a different pore diameter. And today we are going to use a pore which is optimized for the detection of 200 nanometer particles. So for each of the po these pores, we have, a different, uh, we have different reference materials for calibration. Um, and first I will start uh, with attaching this nanopore onto the QNano. So you can see four clamps. It fits perfectly on those clamps. And by turning this wheel over here, I can uh, stretch the pore. So I can change the pore diameter. And I know that at 45 millimeter stretch, the settings are optimal for our uh, sample. So I'm turning to 45 millimeters. Next step is to add PBS SDS uh, to the lower fluid cell. So this will make the pore wet from the bottom side. And then we will take our reference materials, which are 203 nanometer polystyrene nanoparticles, diluted also in PBS SDS. And we will also add that with them, sorry, to the upper fluid cell. So to shield the device from external radiation, we also place the Faraday cage. And so the black thing over here, that's a pressure module, it's a manometer. So we apply uh, an external pressure to the sample of 7 centimeters water. We can now start with the measurement of the reference material. Therefore, I will have to apply a voltage over the nanopore. So to do that, I will simply turn the instrument on and apply a voltage of 0 0.4 uh, volts and press start. So what you see here on the left is the, the current. So we have a baseline current with some noise. And these troughs over here are corresponding to one particle uh, passing through the nanopore. So the height of these troughs is a measure uh, for the diameter of the particle cubed. So here on the right, you can see a cumulative particle count versus time. It's expected to be a straight line, because then you can relate the particle count to concentration. Usually, we measure 1,000 particles. And as you can see, we have measured 1,000 particles now. So I will stop the measurement and save the data. And that's how we do a reference measurement 
for resource to pulse sensing. I just replaced uh, our uh, synthetic reference material by our extracellular vesicle sample here in the QNano. That's why I wore uh, these gloves, which I now can uh, put off. And I can start the measurement. So we can see the baseline again. So the first thing uh, which is striking is that um, the troughs which we see here have different sizes now and that's because our extracellular vesicle sample is a polydispersed sample. So the sizes of the troughs are also different. So we started the measurement. On the right you can see again the cumulative particle t uh, count uh, against time. We expect a straight curve there and we continue our measurement till we have 1000 uh, particles measured. And then afterwards we can calibrate this measurement uh, with our synthetic reference material and by this comparison uh, we are able to obtain the size and concentration of our extracellular vesicle sample.